Hi, this is Chris Davis with Ashkit, and this is the HTC One S. It's the company's new mid-range Android smartphone, uh, announced back at Mobile World Congress uh, in February, and already hitting the market now in April. Uh, it's a 1.5 gigahertz dual-core handset running uh, Qualcomm uh, Snapdragon S4 processor, uh, Android Ice Cream Sandwich 4.0, uh, with the latest iteration of HTC Sense on top, and as you can see, HTC's usual modifications in place, but there, a lot of the widgets and things have been paired back. So, whereas before you'd see an awful lot of unnecessary 3D animation and um, augmentation, now uh, it's kind of a lot cleaner in keeping more with um, what we've come to expect from uh, Ice Cream Sandwich. Now, there were some uh, neat additions uh, in Sense 4.0, such as you get this new uh, calculator widget, uh, and in generally the way that uh, HTC Sense handles widgets is a lot better than. Uh, ice cream sandwiches own system so rather than tagging them onto the end of the app menu you get this new uh, launcher uh, system where you can scroll through all of the different home screen panes at the top uh, select on and then scroll through all of the different widgets on offer and as you can see HTC have added a lot of different uh, controls, toggles for things like auto sync, bluetooth, auto rotate, uh, GPS, data roaming this is a HSPA plus a handset uh, tri-band uh, WCDMA and quad-band GSM Edge uh, and you get uh, Wi-Fi BGN uh, Bluetooth 4.0 uh, with uh, the Aptex profile for better quality or stereo audio streaming and so this is a lot easier to add shortcuts to the uh, home screens uh, and uh, you can add direct links to things like bookmarks Dropbox folders because there's Dropbox integration and when you first turn the phone on you get 25 gigabytes of uh, storage included uh, for two years uh, which goes some way to making up the fact that inside the handset there's actually only 16 gigabytes of, uh, of storage and that's baked in and there's no way of actually adding to that um, this top panel here pulls off uh, and there's a space for a micro sim card slot but like the HTC One X the One S doesn't have a micro sim slot uh, so that 16 gigabytes is all you're getting uh, unlike the uh, One X, there's no NFC for um, Android Beam or any kind of future payment systems, uh, which is something of a shame. A shame. Uh, the screen is also smaller. Uh, this is 4.3 inches and it's running at QHD resolution rather than uh, the 720p resolution of uh, the One X. Still looks good. The uh, AMOLED panel HTC has used uh, has good viewing angles. Uh, the colours are bright, quite vivid as we've come to expect from AMOLED. Um, and Generally, photos look great on it. Uh, the new camera app has been updated as well, so you now get both the photo and video controls on screen at the same time. Uh, and actually, while you're recording video, uh, you can also uh, snap off photos simultaneously. Uh, there's no noise, no interruption. Um, similarly, when you're recording, uh, when you're taking photos, you should say, if you hold down the photo button, um, it continues taking until you let go. And then you get this kind of slideshow, obviously there's not much to see because I'm taking a photo of a table, but um, you can go through to check out each of the different ones and decide, okay, that one's the best, uh, best choose best shot, and it will delete all of the others that you've taken and just keep that last image. Um, records uh, 1080p uh, full HD video, 8 megapixel camera with a backside illuminated sensor, uh, f2.0 lens, 28mm, uh, so HTC is particularly proud of the camera abilities on the One Series. It also has this clever uh, multi-stage uh, LED flash which will change its brightness depending on the proximity of the subject. Uh, there's a front-facing 1.3 megapixel camera uh, with 720p video recording uh, for things like Skype. Um, and all the usual ice cream sandwich uh, improvements, so uh, you get the updated Gmail app, uh, Google Plus is baked in. Um, you get HTC's uh, value-added apps, which vary from the uh, mundane, like the mirror app, which shows you a front view from the camera, to uh, the media editor, which is quite handy. Uh, it's also the new HTC Music Hub, and that brings in all of the different music services that you might have on the phone. Uh, so local music, SoundHound for identifying tracks, TuneIn Radio, Sound Digital, which can preload it. But if you have things like Spotify, that can come in here, and it gives you a central hub to access music from. The only problem is you can't actually integrate playlists from each of those services so you can only for instance uh, have a playlist comprised of uh, Spotify tracks you can't then mix in local music with that as well uh, unless the app itself supports it 
Uh, there's the a new Notes app as well, um, which allows you to, as you might imagine, store notes directly on the phone. And there's a home screen widget which you can use to uh, access those apps easily as well. Um, uh, either a Notes app there, which has got, uh, as you can see, a, a recording shortcut for audio notes and a camera shortcut for taking a photo. Useful if you want to store a picture, say, of a book, for instance, and this uh, larger widget here uh, allows you to scroll through the, with the, the notes. But it also means that you can uh, integrate it with Evernote. Uh, and uh, like we saw on the HTC Flyer tablet uh, last year, uh, that allows you to pull in Evernote notes and view them uh, on the phone. Everything's all synchronized. And then if you go to Evernote on a different device or on your um, web browser on the desktop, uh, you can access everything there. Uh, otherwise, um, the other kind of tweaks, mainly uh, aesthetic from HTC so uh, you get various different home screen widgets including the social widget we saw on the chat chat uh, with uh, Facebook feed going into the um, the panel underneath um, and you also get uh, a new radio widget uh, which you might have seen just before um, uh, which allows you to uh, easily control the FM radio if you've got a headphones a set of headphones plugged in um, Otherwise, uh, it's a solid phone. It's um, one of HTC's thinnest, 7.8 millimeters. In fact, HTC tells us it's the thinnest device they've released so far. Um, it's kind of quite narrow too, long and thin, um, and it feels really high quality. This particular model is the MicroArc uh, oxidation uh, version, which has been sort of baked at high temperatures so that even though you can see it, if you scratch it, that's actually my nail coming off rather than um, marring the, the panel itself. So it's tough enough to stand if you drop it in your pocket and accidentally leave maybe your keys in there as well. It's also Beats Audio baked in too, which is uh, used with the 3.5mm headset. Um, and that works as a profile with all of the different music apps and music services on the phone rather than just HTC's own music app, uh, as was the case in previous uh, HTC devices with Beats. So generally it's a, a nice uh, mid-range device. We'd like to see NFC, but uh, you can't have everything. Um, and it's uh, reasonably fast and responsive. Um, the, the browser, for instance, uh, pinch zooming and nice and quick, um, renders quickly. Um, this is just pulling it over a Wi-Fi connection. Um, and as you can see, you get obviously tap to zoom and it uh, reflows and works in landscape and portrait, obviously. And yeah, it's, uh, nice and quick. Um, and you get flash support. And obviously you can also optionally use the Chrome beta browser uh, which Google has released for ice cream sandwich devices. So that's the HTC One S. Uh, it's out on the market now and the full review is up on Slashgear. Thanks for watching.